Hello everybody, and it is good to talk to all of you again, and I know some of you have been wondering where the hell have I been, and why hasn't there been any World of Warships content, and I'll get to that sort of in a bit. First things first, back from the 2019 World of Warships Community Contributor Summit, hosted by Wargaming in St. Petersburg. And so here are some of the pictures, and some of the videos, and some of the footage, and whatever I collected during the time that I was there. The very first day, of course, nothing actually happened. We were just waiting for people to get in, so those of us who got in early enough managed to go to Catherine's Palace to check that out. We didn't really stay in St. Petersburg. We stayed outside the city in a place called Pushkin. Yeah, there's some sort of stories there. We'll get to that in a little bit. And inside the city, there was, well, not really a city. It's a town, I guess. I don't know. Inside this place called Pushkin, this was really the only thing to do. This one major touristy thing, and that's it. And it was beautiful, mind you. I mean, the photos are absolutely phenomenal. And, I mean, being someone who likes to take photos, it was a pleasure to, you know, be able to get some really amazing pics. Anyhow, um, yeah, the palace was beautiful. Day one was really kind of chill, you know, like lots of walking, lots of, you know, just hanging out with the people who got there early. And that's really about it. The really, of course, the meat of the entire thing really started sort of day two when we were in the wargaming office uh, for pretty much the entire day, starting at like, let's say around 10 in the morning until 7 p.m. at night, and that's two days in a row. A lot of things that we were talking about in the office, they're under either embargo or NDA. NDA stuff we can't really talk about at all until whenever you know that goes down. Embargo material, there's a date currently set that after that date, we're gonna be able to talk about some of this stuff um, Hang in there. It's coming in the next day or two. And I will probably have a video then to, uh, discussing all the things that are lifted from the embargo. In terms of the overall mission objective of the trip, really it had a lot to do with, you know, like this is this was one of those sort of make and break trips for me. Like after this, if, you know, I didn't really see anything positive, shall I say, out of the trip, I think that would have been it for me in World of Warships. There's been this sort of steady decline in um, how I felt about the game, and I didn't really want to be the super negative guy making videos like sort of daily and sort of really hating on the game. Didn't really want to do that, so decided instead just to sort of hold back and sort of take a wait-and-see approach until after the summit. And now that the summit is officially done and I have come back, how do I feel about it? Well, some good, some still not so good. But at least it's enough, I guess, positive feelings to make me sort of maybe take uh, a bit more of a let's just keep going until things happen more kind of approach. I don't know. Uh, but at least not so negative feeling as I was maybe a couple of weeks ago. Anyways, this is a tour, quote-unquote, of the hotel room. Uh, do keep in mind that this particular video was taken actually on the last day. Um, so I'm actually like packed up and everything. The hotel room was really the one major downer of the trip. Um, it was really far away from the city, and so once you got back to the hotel, there really wasn't just anything to do. The room was also very, like, sort of... Russian? <laughs> Is that the way to put it? Uh, it was just a lot of space. Like, empty space that wasn't really utilized. Uh, nobody that really worked at the hotel really spoke any English, which, you know, considering that they brought in, like, 30-some-odd people from all around the world, not having a English-speaking staff is just a little bit odd, to say the least. Uh, what else? Um, oh yeah, the one redeeming feature of the hotel was um, the breakfast. The breakfast was actually surprisingly good, and that was like the highlight of the morning. But yeah, as for the room itself, lots of weirdness. Yeah, and the, the, the weird painting above the bed is also super odd. Anyhow, moving away from the bizarre hotel, and of course, I did say we did spend some time at the office. There's not much footage honestly, that we were allowed to take. This logo was one of them, and of course, the sort of the key main gathering area, which was like this, right? We got a lot of presentations sort of thrown at us during the summit, and uh, there was a couple of CCs um, that, well, we really went to town on Wargaming. Uh, 
uh, notably me, Flamu, Flambass. The three of us were like the three amigos of Grilling Wargaming. And we did quite a bit of that because, like I said, there's going to be some interesting videos coming out in the next little while regarding some of the things that are, you know, coming. And you might understand the reason why we um, grilled them so hard. So and that sort of also explains to you why, like I said, I was kind of feeling it, kind of not, right? Like, certain things that they did, I'm kind of feeling better about. Notably, the AA and CV interaction changes that they're making in patch 0.8.5. There's further changes that are coming that, again, I can't talk about until the embargo lifts. Now, speaking of this particular change, while, well, one, we sort of saw the rationale about how they're doing the changes... Not 100% agreeing with them, and obviously made my thoughts known. Still, you know, seeing that this time they changed it, and then they saw something really, really bad, and they sort of jumped on it really quickly. It is a bit of a positive. Now, please, I know people are, like, losing their heads over this. When they talk to us about, you know, hey, like, we made the change, and now we're going to hotfix it, they did say that the effect of that change was so drastic. That's the only reason why they did it was because it was so crazily drastic. Again, that was like super NDA information that they couldn't share with us. But judging from Feminelli's sort of, you know, expression, whatever, the numbers were just really way beyond projection. So that's why they're doing it. So in some ways, in that regard, I guess I still have some, you know, sort of optimism you know, but I did also say that there were some of those uh, question marks, and uh, yeah, yeah, there's there's still a couple of question marks. I'll, I mean, I'm definitely going to stick around for when those things fully come, so I can hopefully be a voice of, you know, whatever you want to call it, a voice of protest, voice of reason, I don't know, uh, whatever works for Wargaming, voice of feedback, there you go, there's another one, and maybe I can still influence just a little bit of change, hopefully. Um, but we will have to see when that time comes. Anyways, uh, there was a couple of pretty cool photos there of the group of us on top of this restaurant. And like, yeah, by the way, while I was here, it was like the first time I tried vodka. Ugh, three vodka shots in quick su succession. Um, yeah, I'm never doing that again. I was pretty wasted. <laughs> Oh boy, um, yeah, no, yeah, be careful when going to Russia. <laughs> uh, I made a, I made some mistakes there. Yeah, mistakes were made. Did not feel good about that. Um, pretty screwed up, and paid the price. Really, really heavy price. Made me feel, eh, let's just say, pretty awful the second day. Like I had one of those hangovers. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, I mean, it was still like, I mean, it was a nice restaurant i guess i mean the views were fantastic out of the top got some time initially to talk to um quite a few people actually it was yeah it was a good dinner food was actually pretty good too there was one notable salad that was like i don't know i'm not sure what the salad is called but it had like slices of really nicely cooked uh, beef and there was some like super crunchy onions or whatever on it the texture and the taste of it was just like really good i mean Actually, now that I think about it, yeah, maybe that wasn't really much of a salad, but okay. Anyways, it was really damn good. <laughs> but like I said, unfortunately, my night did not go very well as I ended up getting pretty damn wasted. It was actually the first time I ever really drank sort of higher quantities of alcohol. And yeah, nope, nope. I was like the newbie to drinking and boy, three vodka shots within like 20 minutes is plenty to totally and utterly fuck you up <laughs> yeah never doing that again anyhow so we sort of fade out this particular day because that's actually how it went for me you know i by the time i got back to the hotel i just pretty much passed out anyhow so the next day we go back to the office and some more stuff gets talked about most of that's under embargo and then i'll be able to talk to you guys about it and of course, you know, here's like the picture of the majority of the people who were supposed to be there CC wise and staff wise. So that's good. Oh, one other funny thing that happened during the office and I guess this I kind of can talk about because it's not really 
NDA because I'm not going to be going into any specifics, but they let me and Flamu during the office tour get into a room that had this big whiteboard on it. And on this whiteboard was, and I'm not giving details, but on this whiteboard was literally every single planned ship that they were going to have for like the next year, year and a half. And boy, my God, I don't think either me or Flamu were able to actually listen to what the tour guy was saying because we just stood there and went, wow, would you look at that board? That's interesting. Oh my God, look at this. Look at that. Oh man. You know, and then we'd be like that. And um, that allowed us to really get some interesting roasting sessions or, you know, question and answer sessions <laughs> later on with uh, with one of their game balance guys. And, you know, it, it was, uh, yeah, they should not have let us see that. I think maybe next time when they do an office tour, they're just going to conveniently forget that room, right? <laughs> Sorry, CC is going to summer 2020. Uh, maybe that room is just going to be off limits. That was too much information. <laughs> Anyways, so uh, moving on. The next morning, we were supposed to go to Kronstadt. And Kronstadt is like an island near St. Petersburg. There's a naval base on it. And I woke up like 40 minutes late and the bus had left. Yeah. <laughs> they had to get me a cab. Um, but by the time this cab was able to drive me all the way over to the uh, place, I had missed the first part of the tour, which was going inside this really nice looking church. And the inside of it uh, was really amazing. One of the things, though, is that everybody who wanted to, you know, get to the top of this particular church had to actually go up like quite some hefty stairs. <laughs> and apparently by waking up like 40 minutes late, I missed the most torturous part of the day. So guess it sort of all worked out at the end. I mean, still I was able to get some pretty nice photos on the outside of this church. As you can see, the church is absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful area as well. And very, very um, nice location, I guess, if you were a tourist. And it was fortunate because going with Wargaming allowed us to go to these like more further out places where I guess if you were normally a tourist and you were going straight to St. Petersburg, you would kind of miss these places because... Like, you normally wouldn't be taking cabs or anything, like, an hour out of the city. And speaking of cabs, by the way, if you ever happen to go to St. Petersburg, do not hesitate to use Yandex, uh, which is, I guess it's like an app or something, to get yourself a cab. Like, taxis in Russia are, like, super cheap. I mean, a one-hour cab ride is, like, 600 to maybe 700 rubles, which is, like, $10 US. So, you know, hey, if you want to go somewhere that's like around the area, you know, and it's like an hour driving distance, don't be like, oh my God, that cab's going to be super expensive. No, it's not. It's like 10 bucks US. 600 rubles. It's, it's actually really affordable to take a cab, I guess, if you're a tourist. Um, but would totally do that if I ever happened to be going through St. Petersburg again. Anyhow, so I missed this part of the tour, but I did manage to go to the next part of the tour, which is uh, like a small naval museum like a naval artillery museum so we basically got to see some of like the naval artillery used by the soviets during world war ii and uh, maybe some of it even before that originally though this particular day they wanted to get us onto a newly decommissioned sovremini class destroyer and you know, they really wanted to get us onto it. They had to submit our names to, I guess, what's like the modern equivalent of the KGB for approval because the ship is not fully into its museum state yet. Aha, so here's the thing. For those of you in the future, you know, you might want to look into this because if you ever happen to be going to sort of this area in maybe like another year, year and a half's time, you might want to see if that ship is open as a museum ship. Right now, it's still in this you know, process of decommissioning. So obviously with whatever sensitive equipment or whatever, they were like, yet you cannot come onto the ship. So we missed it. We got pretty close to it, by the way. There was actually a little like boat cruise that we took. Um, we saw some interesting like fortifications or whatever. And like in the distance, we could see that destroyer. It was like, it was there. And, you know, as the little cruise tour boat, whatever was taking us closer to it, we're like, oh my God, we're coming closer. And then ah, it turns away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how I wish I had a telephoto lens. Seriously, I might have gotten a picture or two uh, at a distance of that ship. 
But maybe, who knows, maybe the CCs who go 2020 will be fortunate enough to get onto that ship. This museum was still kind of neat though. It was really small. We did get like sort of a nice little talk by the museum guy about what each of the guns were and sort of things that they did. Um, for those of you who can identify it, the gun in the back here is the Kutuzov's AA guns and the one in the front is the Quad 45s. And on this side, it's... I guess a little bit more random. There was like a rocket launcher and there was like a tank turret or whatever. Um, here were some gun barrels as well, as well as the original name sign or this, I don't know, the, the part of the name for the heavy cruiser Kirov. Now, at this part of the video in this little museum, I was like really rushing because everybody was leaving and they were like, hurry up, get out of this museum. And I'm like, okay, 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 okay. All right, you know, getting my butt out of here. Um, as you can see, everybody is leaving, and I'm like, alright, I'm just gonna try to capture as much as I can, and so I do apologize that the last little bit was a little bit rushed. Anyhow, on to the boat tour, because that is well, a neat part of the trip. Um, the one really crazy thing was, like, where the boat tour boats actually were. If I had gone to Russia by myself, I would have never found it. Like, it was like you're driving on this highway and there's just like sudden turn off into this place with looks like just a lot of random sand and then you have to go down this like tiny wooden pier thing mabob and boom there's like two little tour boats that could take you out into the water so anyways i'm not sure if you can see it but on the video you can see right there in the center in the distance there there is that sovereignty class destroyer that they originally wanted to try to get us on board but not possible oh well I love you. Anyhow, the rest of the boat cruise is pretty neat, I guess. Uh, it was sort of more like a informational sort of thing where the person sort of explained to us, you know, how these fortifications were built, what the fortifications did for the area, etc, etc, etc. And that wasn't the longest tour, probably, I guess from like beginning to end, maybe like 40, 45 minutes wasn't really the longest tour. Anyways, now because we didn't get to see the actual destroyer, they had to sort of really fill us in with other activities. So this was a boat tour. And then we, after we get back, we would get to go back to the area where they actually had like the present day naval base, which I have like a picture or two coming up in a little bit. So anyhow, um, talking a little bit more, more about the non-touristy stuff. So going back again to the wargaming thing. So, like I said, you know, feeling a little bit better than, I guess, before the summit, um, because I'm seeing, again, some more of the rationale about some of the things that they've done lately, and it's not just completely batshit crazy. Um, do I still have my concerns? Obviously. There's still some things that just made me go during the summit, like, what? I, like, what? I still have that. Um, of course, when that time comes, I... I'm absolutely going to voice what I think um, because, yeah, there, there's some things I think they still need to kind of hear it again because the amount of grilling that we did was maybe not enough. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. Again, as the embargoes begin to lift and we begin to be able to release information, we'll see what has happened from maybe the summit, you know, because maybe the amount of uh, negative feedback we gave during the summit is enough to to have them change their mind a little bit. I don't know. We'll have to see. There was a lot of uh, roasting and grilling, and like I'm pretty sure uh, the three amigos are like never going to go back to the same summit again. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that was the most enjoyable experience for them either. Um, overall, like I said, uh, the trip in terms of its experience as a whole, yeah, was positive. I mean, you know, a lot of it was the touristy stuff that was kind of nice to be able to see a different place. You know, think of it as like a, you know, sightseeing tour or whatever. Well, that was nice. Um, the actual game in itself, eh, some positives, you know, some understanding about what they're doing. So some of the balancing questions has been answered a little bit better, a little bit more insight into how they've come up with it. Um, there have also been like lessons learned that they are going to make sure that they don't screw up as badly again or some things in the future. So, you know, like they are learning, they are, you know, gaining some lessons from things that they haven't done so well. So in that way, it is positive, right? So, you know, I guess my expectation is that they are going to do things better, but 
again, sort of more of a let's wait a little bit and see what happens because, you know, one can say what one can say and, you know, one will do what one does and, you know, we'll have to see if the actions and the words kind of match up eventually or not. So, um, yeah, I do expect more videos about all sorts of things in the coming days and weeks. Of course, I did, I think, mention to people before that I'm also moving. So that will also open up some more time for content creation as well. So that's also a, a bit of a positive. There, well, yeah, this one little island, by the way, in front of us, that was like a fortification. That was pretty cool. It was like a fort that had a lot of cannons in it before that allowed it to defend this sort of rather critical area. So, you know, there was a lot of these sort of old structures uh, that have still been left out there, and they're still there. And, like, honestly, when you're looking at it from a boat, they look like they're still in, like, semi-reasonable condition. You know, I guess if they ever needed to, they could always stick some cannons back in there and, hey, hey, you know, fortification again. Not sure how effective it would be, but, you know, probably they could do it. Mm. Anyhow, so, yep, yeah, boat ride concludes, and like I said, we move to the actual naval base. And yes, as you can see, finally some naval ships, uh, including one rather modern stealth frigate there, number two, hull number 531. I do believe that was called the Grimyashi. Yeah. <laughs> so for those of you who uh, were wondering what the modern Grimyashi looks like, that's that ship over there. The furthest out, the one that's the hull number 310, apparently that's a training ship. But yeah, it was really nice to be able to actually get to a point and go, oh yeah, look, actual naval ships. Um, unfortunately, we had to see them a little bit at a distance. Now, next to this particular area, um, like sort of on the, I guess, dock or whatever right next to it, there were also some military vehicles. And uh, for those of you who like military vehicles, see if you can identify what some of these are. <laughs> I'm sure most people are just looking at the one in the center and going, oh, we know what that is, right? <laughs> so they had all of these lined up. Now, interestingly enough, it looked like there were signs on them, so maybe it's supposed to be part of the military museum? I don't know, but that equipment looks like it's uh, ready to be used at any time. So after this part of the trip, we were heading off towards lunch, so I've got a few more photos in. This one is of the park that we're going to walk through, and it had a pretty nice view towards the, right there where the, uh, I guess that's the harbor, that's harbor facility, where that is. So I know, this was a nice photo, I liked it. Mm. Hey, I, I, like, I like taking photos, that's like, kind of my thing. If I can't do anything else, at least I get good photos, right? And then I'm happy. Okay, going around the other way, there was also a wedding going on, and these two people were just, like, out in the park, dancing happily, and, yeah, that's that's all I gotta say. Happy couple, doing their thing. Um, <laughs> it was nice. It was nice seeing people like that. Anyhow, so, this day finishes. Um, I did not go to the evening bar thing, because, seriously, the last time getting, like, wasted was not positive impression about getting drunk. Yeah. So anyhow, next day, we went on the very, very grand sort of walking tour with Feminelli. And so the first stop was the Artillery Museum. Now, these photos are going to go really, really quickly because I have a lot of them. And so I'm like just going to cycle them quickly so you guys can check out all the really cool artillery pieces and things like that that were there. Some of the cannons were really freaking big. Like, no joke, some of them were massive. There was one like in there that is just like the biggest freaking artillery piece I've ever seen. They also had like one modern tank, um, a whole row of cannons. The Russians really like their big freaking cannons, mind you. Uh, there was a couple of like missile launchers. There's a um, MLRS, the next one over. That that's a pretty cool vehicle to see. Um, there was one really interesting thing in here. There was a giant surface-to-air missile, and we were looking at this one here. And we we're looking at it, and going like. What in the world is that? It looked like an SA-2, but it wasn't. I mean, this is the SA-2, right? And so me and the guy uh, who was there, one of the Asia CCs, we were just there. We're looking this thing up. And finally, we found out that that missile was an anti-ballistic missile. So it was actually meant to intercept, like, incoming ICBM. So neat little uh, find there. There was also a helicopter that came in for a landing, which was, like, not sure why, but okay. There's a the photo anyways. And this is the museum as a whole. Like I said, you know, trying to get these photos done really, really quickly because... We only had so much time to cover it, and trying to get like good photos is is not the easiest thing in the world. Like you're trying to pick the best angles and trying to get the best shots, and so hopefully I've done a good job for those of you who are into like these kinds of military hardware. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of surface-to-air missile launchers that managed to get a couple of photos of, and ideally in some like kind of interesting angles to make them look that much more menacing. <laughs> look. 
I'm really much more of a ships guy, but military hardware still is kind of cool for me, even though I have very little knowledge fully of all the ground-based military equipment. There was also this random cat that was just walking around very casually through all the equipment, so there she is, or he, I'm not sure if it's a girl or a boy, but hey, that cat was super happy, and that was the big-ass cannon, by the way, and that cat was like super happy to just like lie there and let us take photos. Hmm. Aurora, yes, <laughs> finally a ship, and unfortunately, we didn't have time to get onto it because there was one absolutely hell of a long line that just never looked like they were going to get onto the ship. So, you know, time was tight and we only had so much time. So we're like, okay, get the photo of the outside of the ship and moving on. So we ended up going to a church. This was one of those churches that the inside of it is just like, holy freaking God. So, I mean, the outside already looks really, really nice. Like you can already see that the outside of this church is like some beautiful uh, church as a whole. But the inside of it was just like, yeah, <laughs> absolutely spectacular. The name of the church is the Church of the Savior on Spilled Blood, I think. Don't quote me on that. My ability to remember long names of churches is pretty darn poor. But still, the photos from the inside is wow, like literally 10 for 10. Um, beautiful photos, was able to capture them. And like, I'm really happy as like a guy who takes photos. These photos made me happy. So went out, took another photo of the rear of the church, and then it was the continuing of the walking tour until we basically got to this. This is the Winter Palace. And unfortunately, by the time we got here, most people were, well, really tired. And uh, we didn't have anybody who wanted to go inside to do the inside tour of the palace. So unfortunately, this is something that I will have to leave to the future as it is uh, one of the things that I haven't fully been able to check off. Got the outside, didn't really get the inside. Still managed to get some reasonably nice photos of the outside. So, you know, at least like half mission accomplished, I would say. Anyways, so that's the uh, pretty much the conclusion of this video as I can't really talk about any of the details of the ships things that are coming out probably in the next day or two. So hang in there. Hope you enjoyed this uh, sort of post-summit video, and I will, of course, talk to you all really, really soon.